At only 15 years of age, Amir has already caught um, a lot of fans off guard with his rapid rise through the ranks in United Academy. Uh, his latest achievements uh, and involvements within the first team at Carrington really speaks volumes of this extraordinary talent. Uh, and it's not just his extraordinary talent, but the entire family is on an absolute madness. Um, so Amir can play off the left, off the right, or as a number 10 down the middle. Um, and he is uh, an Avar, which be he belongs to the, the Avar ethnic group uh, in Dagestan, born in 2008. He's only moved to England in 2019 when he was just 11 years of age. Uh, where he had the opportunity to join the Sheffield United Academy. Quickly made a name for himself, caught the attention of United, who invited him to join the Manchester United Academy. And Amir became the captain of the under-14s and later the under-15 teams before signing his first professional contract with the club at the age of just 15 in summer of 2022. January 21st, 2023 sticks out as uh, something quite interesting. And there have been players that have done this, but it's a rarity. He made his debut in the under-16 team against Liverpool, where he scored. And then he went over to the next pitch, where he made his debut with the under-18s team, also playing Liverpool, and scored again. <laughs> in February 2023, Amir was selected for the England under-15 team. He remains eligible to play for Russia, uh, but the current circumstances prevent um, any of the Ibrahim Ibrahimovs uh, from representing the Russian national team, which is currently excluded from all competitions. Now, Amir's got a couple of brothers, a few brothers. Uh, his younger brother, Mohammed is in the Manchester City Academy, as is his second younger brother, uh, Gazik, who is at the Manchester United Academy. There is another brother. The other brother is an extremely talented MMA fighter, which I found out about through my friend Brendan and also Moke who hails from the region in Dagestan as well. Um, telling me about this extremely talented kid in East Manchester. Um, and Brendan actually sparred him ahead of his, his recent title fight. So how good is he? Good enough for Brendan to get him in for sparring. That's how good he is. Um, so whatever their old man's doing, raising four absolute killers, um, take my hat off to him. But focusing on Amir at the moment, because he's the one that's closest to the Manchester United first team, literally in training with them at the moment. If you're starting to describe his strengths, he's got this level of explosiveness. It allows him to break through defensive blocks and lines. He loves to carry the ball. He is confident. He's got great control, great finishing, the mentality. Anyone who's watched Dagestani wrestlers in the UFC, the mentality of them is some sort of like extra level of stoicism. Amir's got it. Like, and we haven't really seen this sort of break in in football. We've seen it completely dominate. Like if you get... um. You know, an Islamic sounding first name and a Russian sounding surname uh, as an opponent in a UFC fight. Oh, mate, you were in trouble. Uh, and it's that sort of beat you down, wear you out, everything that you've seen Khabib do. This is this is what you're getting, but in a footballer. You know, he's composed. He's he's blessed with you know physical strengths that. Are quite unique actually you know he, you know he can dribble he's got great technique great first touch he's got an in-game iq he's got great spatial awareness he's got the dog in him and he's got the ability to just make things happen in special moments he's got that x factor right lads gather around you have heard me banging on about manscape for ages uh, mainly discussing the virtues of a well-trimmed ball bag but today we're going to move a little bit north and something that you might have actually seen my beard. Manscaped isn't just a master of below the belt grooming, they have conquered beard territory too. And I know this is groundbreaking news, let's delve into the details. Now, we are all well acquainted with Manscaped's brilliance for the downstairs department. They've been many a saviour of many a date night and many a ball bag. And you know the lawnmower 4.0 by now. I'm not going to tell you about any of the features for it because if you don't know them, then you're never going to know them, right? It's a certified hero for the never regions. But they're here for the beards now as well. And they've got the beard hedger. 
It is a cordless miracle worker that is both tough and gentle. It takes down facial forests in a single stroke. It's got 20 different lengths of settings. It gives you the power to totally customize your beard without cluttering up the bathroom and having a million different attachments. Now, they've also got another member of the band and it's the Handyman. That is a dual-sided foil razor that has got your back, whether it's your face, whether you're going clean shaven or just tidying up a little bit around the neck. It is the epitome of comfort in the shaving world and it's got a seamless and nick free experience so listen if you want to give your beard the vip treatment that it absolutely deserves get over to manscape.com use a special code housen you're going to get 20 percent off and free shipping and while you're grooming the jewels let's not neglect the crown with manscaped who said beauty had to be a pain let's keep it neat and tidy top to bottom now he is an inside forward that loves cutting in uh, to try and engage players and create space that's what he likes to do. He's often found centrally. Uh, his first touch usually, usually sets him forward a little bit. His first touch is so good as well. That allows him to make good first decisions. Um, and he makes differences game after game. And he's dynamic. He's able to make very uh, quick, uh, very clever decisions at speed, which make him a very, very dangerous player operating in between the lines. And when he receives the ball on a half turn, dribbles forward, the difference between him and some other younger players is the chin's up and he's looking. And he's a triple threat. You know, he, he can pass, dribble or shoot from those areas. And for his age, he's got remarkable composure. And I think sometimes it's the composure that sets people out, you know, the balance, the speed, the vision, the protection of the ball. He's got it all at once. And he, he makes um, he makes shots with very, very good technique. A um, little bit of a spe set-piece specialist. And he plays in a very, very front foot and direct style. Like If he breaks into the first team, immediate fan favourite, because he's not taking a backward step for anybody. He's going to run at defenders with pace. He's going to run at them with confidence. He's going to make people make decisions about him and then go the other way. He's great with his combination play, very creative. Uh, and as we mentioned, great striker of the ball from all sorts of angles, inside the box and outside the box. And he ain't the biggest, but he's got that, uh, he's got a great physique on him. So the point where... Right now, when you're watching him play, and I don't know how tall he's going to end up being, there's an Aguero-ishness about him where even though he's compact, he's thick with it and the the balance is great. And even though Aguero was small, you try and smash into him, he, he kind of gets his body in the right place at the right time, gets his feet set at the right time and doesn't get shugged off the ball very easily. That centre of gravity is great uh, and helps him keep balance and... You know, I'm sure all of those brothers grew up wrestling. You know, and, and that's probably where that core strength kind of comes from. Uh, and like I said, composed, technical, big IQ, uh, and very, very good footwork. Now, it's not perfect, and there is things that he can improve. Um, I think he could be a little bit calmer sometimes, know when to progress and when to elevate the in-game tempo because, and, and that will probably come. The things that we sort of, really praising Menu for are sometimes the things that John we said like as an 18 year old coming into the team you're expecting him to just crash bang and wallop himself around and really make himself known and make a nuisance of himself that's something that you always associate with young players coming through if Amir breaks through I guarantee that's what he brings because that's how he plays he pl there's like uh you know when you saw a young Wayne Rooney just come in and just smashing into people when Amir breaks through, you're going to see things like that. You know, I would maybe like him to see a bit more off the left foot. Seems to go on his right quite a lot. Um, and if he diversifies his game that much and, and gets onto the ball and actually doesn't try to attack at every single opportunity, I think you'll see a better player. If you maybe look to get to the byline for checkbacks a little bit more often, because he can do it but he seems to try and set himself up rather than what might be quite a high percentage uh, assist if he, he was to go down that route. I think he's got the opportunity to train with a senior team at 15 and 16 because he's close to the, to the level required to start getting minutes. I don't think he's been given the opportunity to train with a first team this young because they were short on numbers. I don't think he's literally just come in and, and put a bib on and played opposition. 
I think they're looking at him for the future and they absolutely should do. And there's little doubt that he's going to become a professional player of a very, very good standard. But the gap between good and excellent and good enough for Manchester United is quite a significant gap. And it will depend on a lot of external factors. It will depend on his family making the right decisions. It will depend on himself making the right decisions. And it will depend on the look of injuries, usually, to get a debut in the first team. And it will require him being able to take advantage of those opportunities when they come. I think there's things that he re he's going to require to improve upon before he's let loose inside the Premier League. I think there's things that he needs to add to his game before he's going to get the trust of Eric Ten Hag. But I also think that he's being given the opportunities to train with the first team because they think he's capable of reaching that level. And his size means he is going to be required to adapt to the physicality of the Premier League. And I think he's, he's probably capable of doing that. But he's got a very exciting profile. He's got a very energetic, very fan-friendly way of playing the game that I think within two or three games, the fans are going to love him. And I think he's got the mentality to work hard on his weaknesses and not rest on his laurels. I think the fact that there's going to be so much competition in his house, um, you know, one at United, one at City, one literally kicking everyone's ass in the, the MMA world. Um, I don't think he'll be allowed to rest on his laurels. I'm very excited to see if this lad comes through, but he could be a once in a lifetime talent. Um, he's not quite as prolific as what we've seen coming through with the likes of Mason Greenwood, who was genuinely unique, but he's got different attributes. I'm excited about this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you've seen him, what you think about him, and do you think he'll be one that we see in the first team? Um, you know, Ten Hag has shown his hand a little bit with some youngsters. If they are good enough, they are featuring. Could Kobe Maynou's path into the first team be something that Ibrahimov can follow? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you lot in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news, as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.